a good break. Managed to um, have some food, feel a bit refreshed after this morning. And maybe you even had an opportunity to talk with some of the people you came with about what we were hearing from Colossians this morning. Um, and really, that's what this third session is about. We want to start a conversation um, with one another about how we can live wholeheartedly for Jesus. Um, so we're going to do that in a few minutes. I'm going to invite some women up onto the stage with me. Uh, we're going to sit um, and have a chat. We're just going to um, look at each other's lives and think about, in the day-to-day, -day, what does it look like to live wholeheartedly for Christ? But before we do that, we're going to sing together again. Um, we're going to sing of God's great mercy, which is enough to cover all of our sins. So please do stand when the music starts. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Our love could remember no wrongs we have done. Our nations are knowing he counts on their sum. No need to us sing with our boats of our shore. Um, take a seat, uh, get comfy. Uh, we're going to get comfy up here on the stage. Um, so I've invited um, some people to come up on the stage with me. We're going to introduce them in a moment. Uh, but as I said before, we're really just having a chat. So please settle in um, and enjoy. Um, listen to what they've got to say. Um, but we're not experts. We're just women. And we're going to talk um, about our lives. Um, great. So. Um, Helen, we've heard from you already this morning, had a little intro, um, but you can answer this question as well. Um, what's your name, and which church did you, um, are you at at the moment? 
Uh, I'm Helen, and I go to a church called Dundonald Church, which is in Wimbledon. Great. Hi, I'm Chloe. Um, I'm from Worcester, and I go to a church called Wood Green Church. Yeah. And I'm Liz, and I go to a church in Birmingham called Crossway. I'm Angela, and I go to City Church, Birmingham. Correct. Um, and we really want to get to know you a bit um, before we hear um, about how you might live wholeheartedly for Jesus. We want to get to know um, more about you. So tell us, what's your favourite biscuit to have with a cup of tea? Clearly a ginger nut. There is no discussion to be had there. <laughs> it, do, you, do you let them share the biscuit tin with these, these other biscuits? Oh, <laughs> I... I is it terrible to say my biscuits never get as far as a tin? <laughs> <laughs> no issues then. No issue with the ginger permeating. Uh. Um, I think with a cup of tea, it would have to be a ginger nut, but I'll change it to a jammy dodger because I feel like they're the best ones to have because they've got, they're not very dry because they've got a bit like, like jam in the middle. I don't know. So, yeah. Nice. And I think mine would be a brandy snap. Ooh. Mm. Oh, that's quite, quite a popular choice, I think. Because yeah. sometimes you can put cream in each end. Sometimes you can put something all the way through. But on their own, they're just delicious. I like all biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good choice. Um, great. And another question, just so we really can um, feel what, what's, what you're about. If you could be any animal, what would you be and why? Oh, um, rabbit. Oh, okay. uh, I think rabbit probably expresses my natural personality. I'm basically scared of everything, <laughs> like a rabbit. Uh, but actually not, I will still stand my ground. Uh, but also just to have that much fluff, uh, <laughs> that people just want to cuddle you. Uh, that sounds, maybe that's just the post-pandemic need a hug thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I think I, I was thinking about this a lot because I was really worried because Abby said in her text that it was a trivia question. So I thought it was going to be like trivial pursuit. And I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not good at that. So I was thinking about it all week. And I think I settled for Bumblebee because they have a purpose and, yeah, they only sting when they need to. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm indecisive, so I'm going to be two animals. I am a, a rather aged mountain goat, and actually you described the mountain goat experience very beautifully for me. But I am, you might be surprised to know, um, I'd like to be a gazelle. Peaceful, elegant, uh, being able to take two feet off the ground before landing. <laughs> Yeah, I'd also like to be a gazelle, but only because normally I'm called very heavy-footed, so <laughs> I'm probably more of a kind of tortoise plodding along. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it was me, if the question came back to me, I think I'd have to say a hippopotamus. And the reason is because they wallow. Isn't that a good word? Wallow. <laughs> so that's, that's why. Um, great. So you've heard a bit about um, maybe um, we can gauge a bit of your personality from your answers there. But what about, um, what do you do? What, what does your week look like? Um, on an on a average day, maybe next Tuesday, what, what would you be doing? Uh, probably something quite similar to this for me. Um, I, I, my, my week kind of careers from a meeting to a speaking engagement to writing to counselling to gardening to eating to back again. <laughs> um, and I love that variety. I love the fact that there are never two days uh, that are the same uh, and never, never two weeks when I'm in the same place. Um, so my Tuesday would be at college at six form. I'm in year 13. And then probably get home and go on a driving lesson, which has been very exciting. My mum's teaching me, so yeah. <laughs> but she hasn't grabbed for the door handle yet, so I think I'm doing okay. Um, yeah, that would be my Tuesday. Well, I'm retired, so I am more flexible than the rest of you. Um, although, perhaps like you, my week can vary, obviously. Um, but 
I'm fortunate in that when I was working, I couldn't have a long, quiet time first thing in the morning, and that now I have breakfast every morning with my husband, which we never did when we were working or had family, which is absolutely, that is, goes on a, really lovely. Um, the day varies a lot. Um, it's the one day in the week I don't have exercise, because I'm quite energetic. Um, it might involve seeing people. I enjoy that a lot. Um, and I also belong to two secular activities, WI, which happens to be on a Tuesday, and a book club, which are both on a Tuesday. Um, and those are really good. And um, in the evening, it's life group. Busy Tuesday. <laughs> um, so I generally wake up crying because I don't want to go to school. I'm a teacher. <laughs> um, and then I get through that, I teach teenage boys, uh, and then I come home and I'm a chauffeur, not paid, but to my children, <laughs> taking them to their clubs, swimming or rugby, and uh, then I crawl into bed, probably crying, no. Not always, <laughs> not always crying on a Tuesday, sometimes <laughs> other days as well. Um, yeah, and then I might watch some TV, yeah. Great. Um, so we've been hearing today how um, Colossians speaks into our lives as Christians, um, and it calls us to live wholeheartedly, um, but we know from experience that that's, that's not always easy. So I just wondered if you could tell us about some of the challenges. Um, where do you face challenges in living wholeheartedly for Jesus in your day-to-day -day lives? Uh, why don't we not start with Helen? <laughs> um, I can start. Um, so, obviously, college is filled with a lot of very opinionated 17 and 18 year olds who love to ask questions because um, I'm very openly religious at school. Um, which, yeah, sometimes the questions can be really challenging or very brutal and honest. Um, and sometimes it's difficult to know whether they're asking them to kind of. I don't know, see my logic in situations and see from a Christian point of view, or if they're actually invested and want to know more. So that's difficult to kind of choose between. But yeah, it's interesting to see what their view is and my view is. Um, and mainly at the minute, it's about sex and relationships, which is very controversial from the worldly view and our view as Christians. So. <clears throat> Again, I'm aware that I'm at a different stage in life, and this is the lovely thing about this group. I think that, for me, I do, I, I suspect we all do, um, you know, everybody here. I, I do believe, I have this desire to live wholeheartedly for Christ. There is no doubt about it. But it was just actually as Helen was talking this morning about this bit, that you, how easy it is to get it out of sync. And I'm quite enthusiastic about a lot of things. So I get involved in something and, and, and that's great. And I really seek the Lord's will over so much of this. But there are times I find myself going along as though I'm in the driver's seat and I could choose either of these, actually, to be Jesus, but we'll take this one because I'm in the driver's seat. And, and Jesus is beside me, and I'm saying, Jesus, Lord, please just help me with this situation now. And, and I'm going to be seeing so-and-so, or, oh, Lord, I seem to be so busy, and I have to get out of that driver's seat and remember that actually it does not depend on me and to just be in the back of the passenger seat. So that's for me the struggle. Yeah, I think a lot of us could probably relate to that, trying to hold the steering wheel for ourselves. Yeah, um, yeah letting go of that. Thanks. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, I think in the busyness of life and getting everything done, it can be easy just to have my mind fixed firmly on earthly things, kind of what, what we're going to eat, where, who's going next, where, are there any clean clothes, has anybody got socks? <laughs> And to, to kind of, Jesus gets pushed out, and that's always a kind of temptation, even with church things, to be at the next meeting, the next things I have to get for church. And so it's a real kind of, uh, it's a challenge to make that time to be intentional and say, okay, I want to rest in Jesus rather than always say, 
I'm just going to rest with Netflix. You know, that's a challenge. <laughs> I think it's, it's very easy when you get paid to talk, to talk about Jesus, to have Jesus as your job. Uh, and Jesus isn't a job, he's a, a saviour uh, and a, a friend and a Lord. Um, so I think one of my struggles is actually remembering to spend time talking to him uh, and loving him rather than talking about him uh, and encouraging others to love him. It is so easy. Anyone who ever holds a microphone will know how easy it is to be a hypocrite. Um, and um, I think that's the struggle, just seeing that the difference between... Um, uh, what I encourage people to do and, and what I sometimes do myself. Um, it can be hard to keep going. Yeah, um, that is the truth, isn't it? It's hard to keep going um, and to keep rooted in Jesus. We heard that he is the way that we keep going as a Christian, um, to stay um, with Jesus, who um, enabled us to be reconciled to God through his bloodshed on the cross. Um, but that's not just the way in to Christianity. It's the way on in Christianity, as we were hearing earlier. Um, why then is it worth it when there's challenges facing us as, we, as we've just talked about why is it worth it why do we keep going um liz why don't come to you first why do you keep going there are so many reasons aren't there for why we keep going because what would life be without christ and that's not said the trite comment because i'm sitting here i think we probably all of us know that. And again, I go back to um, the talks this morning where I found myself thinking, this is so true as I look back on life, that actually, you know, Christ is, we have freedom through him. And that is freedom to be ourselves. So if we get nervous, okay, he still loves us. But I think for me, the it's worth bringing in one that I think relates to my age, but I, it holds for everyone. I really enjoy people, thoroughly enjoy people. I've enjoyed talking to people this morning that I haven't met before. Um, and I know that at the end of my life, I will face, and I already am, people dying who I am so fond of. And I can be thankful to God that they're going to heaven if they're Christians and I can be alongside them either way. But there's going to come a point also where I'm going to go and I'll have to say goodbye to people that I really love. And I want, I don't know whether I'll do that well, I don't know if I'll have a warning or whether I'll just fall flat. But basically, I'd want to do that with grace. But ultimately, the only person we have when we get to the end of our days is our Lord Jesus Christ. And we won't be taking that step on our own. We'll be taking it with him, holding our hand. And then when we get to heaven, wow. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah, I suppose just uh, mirroring that really, nothing else really matters. Even when I think, oh, what school will my daughter end up at? You know, in the big... Uh, in the big scheme of things, actually, what's more important is that she knows Jesus. And even for me, you know, it doesn't matter how much washing I've got done or how much isn't done or how much marking isn't done. Actually, no, that doesn't define me. Jesus, his death, his resurrection, that is my life. Um, and it's just remembering that, isn't it? The temptation to feel defined by what I've done or what I haven't done is just very strong. But I think always coming back to that, actually, nothing else matters uh, that's key. Actually, it's Jesus. Jesus is our life. Fix our eyes on him. Um, so what made it worth following Jesus for me was when I was in like year five, I started suffering with anxiety. So I went to see doctors and counsellors and after quite a while, I realised that none of them could really help me. And then I ended up turning to God and what really helped me was prayer and knowing people that praying for me and having verses that were stuck up on my wall and I'd actually learn them so then if I was lying down because it was usually come at night when I'd become really anxious then I could recite them and remember that God's the one who's strengthening me and he's there he's protecting me he's keeping me safe and in school I think it's 
nice to see that I have hope that others don't belong, that don't have, and that I belong to Christ, whereas they're kind of, like you were saying before, wandering aimlessly in the in-between that we can sometimes do, but then we have to look to Christ and remember that he strengthens us and he guides us. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely everything they said. Um, it's, it's just so wonderful, isn't it, to know that you're in this life utterly secure, utterly loved, with immense purpose and heading for somewhere perfect. Um, and I, I know that doesn't make life easy, but I think reminding myself of that, that as a Christian, I can't be unloved and I can't be useless uh, and I can't be uh, sort of spiritually unsafe. Those things are impossible in Christ. Uh, that does uh, make this life uh, so worthwhile. But even I think even if you stretch all that away, just looking at Christ and seeing who he is and that he would want a relationship with with us. I mean, that is extraordinary. That's, that's worth getting out of bed for, even on those days when you're crying because you've got to go to school. Um, it's, he is that wonderful. Yeah. Um, I thought it was great earlier, um, Helen, when you showed us that Christ is supreme, and that means he is over all things. He's over the entire universe, um, and yet he um, came to reconcile us. Um, because he's over the entire universe, he's over every aspect of our lives. Um, that really does make it worthwhile every day, whatever we're doing, um, we can keep living for him. He's over that. Um, this is the last question. Um, maybe you'll be pleased to know. <laughs> Breathe a sigh of relief. Um, but I just wondered if you could help us. Do you, do you have any tips or um, things that you do to help you fix your eyes on Jesus? Um, things that help you to lift your eyes to um, the heavenly places where Christ is um, and where we'll be going. Do you have anything, any tips to give us that will help us as we go from today? Angela, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so after I've finished crying and I'm on my way to work, I don't cry while I'm driving, you'll be <laughs> pleased to know, but I often uh, put on some Christian music just to remind myself of God's truth as I prepare to go to work. And I find that's really helpful uh, just to kind of prepare my mind to remind myself of great truth. And also on that, when I come home, when you're too tired to read God's word, I have these wonderful things now, audio Bible, you can listen to someone else. So if you can't open your eyes, you can hear God's word. And I think that's really uh, just two things that I've found really helpful in kind of keeping close to him. Um, so like I said before, Bible verses, one that really helped me was Psalm 4, verse 8. And I wrote it down because I didn't want to get it wrong. But it said, in peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, alone Lord, make me dwell in safety. Which was really calming and just reminded me that he was there. Um, for people my age, I know there's like a lot of Christian camps available that you can go on. And they are just incredible um just solid well not solid because that would be really intense but christian ministry um it's really encouraging and relatable and we like to call it a little christian boost just because it really kind of hypes you up to keep going and keep striving for god um also for like christians in school and in college or in university who are being asked questions i've learned that it's oh it's like fine to say actually I don't know the answer because we don't we don't know the answers to everything and to say I'll get back to you and ask somebody who knows <laughs> so, yeah. and I think um, for me it's it was a, one it was a lesson I learned many many years ago and I learned it quite painfully looking at the verses um, at the end of Psalm 139 Search me, O God, and know my heart, and see if there's any um, sinful way within me. And there are different translations of it, and each of them, or versions of it, each of them are beautiful and say something. But it was very easy to live with a sort of persona, and, of course, fall flat on one's face, and I know what that's like. And actually, now it's to be 
as honest as I can with myself and with other people, but much more important to be honest with God. And um, it actually means that it's really, I said I love fellowship with other people, but it means stepping aside on my own and really being honest about what I'm feeling and where I'm feeling vulnerable, where I feel helpless. And he really, I find that is what I need to do in my Christian walk. And it's something I have to do again and again and again. Somebody this morning said, items for prayer? And I thought of items for prayer. And she said, nerves? And then I went, yes. But it's actually ignoring what the outer persona, but Christ knows us and loves us. Absolutely. And he loves our vulnerability because then we're just, we have to rely on him, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, three lovely examples of how to connect on the vertical. So maybe uh, I'll go for the horizontal uh, uh, as, uh, as my tip. And that is allow yourself to be known by people in your church. Allow yourself the privilege of having other people to speak into your life and allowing uh, yourself the privilege to speak into other people's lives. I think often when I fall flat on my face, I've known I've been heading for that fall for months, if not years, beforehand. And my heart has been getting harder and harder and harder. But I've hidden it from the people around. I've hidden it from God as well. So thank you for the 139 reminder. But I've hidden it from my friends. And I've said I'm fine when I'm not. Um, And I think if we're passionate about being wholehearted, passionate about going for Christ, that also means being passionate about being willing to be weak and vulnerable with our sisters in Christ. Uh, and saying, you know what, I haven't prayed this week. Every time I read the Bible, it feels like I'm just reading the back of the ingredients uh, of a, a very healthy snack. It's not, it doesn't feel like it's bringing me joy. And the sooner we can say that to somebody, the sooner that other person can say to us, should we pray about that? Why don't we read scripture together? Why don't we maybe get a group of us together? Because you know what? We're we're not the only two in church feeling like that. And then we can spur each other on to seek God together uh, and to keep each other going on those hardest of times. It's why we're a church, not a series of isolated Christians. We are designed to do this Christian life uh, arm in arm. Great. Um, Thank you so much, um, all of you, for joining us on the sofa. And we really hope that um, that's just been the start of a conversation. Maybe you drove here with someone in the car. You can continue to talk about what you've heard today um, on the way home. Um, Or maybe people at your church are watching online. um, So you can pick up a conversation with them as well um, when you get back to your church. Um, Well, thank you. You can um, go back to your seats in a minute. I'm just going to pray for us. Sorry to give you a false start. Um, I'm going to pray for us um, as we do that um, before we sing again. Father, we thank you so much for today, for Helen and um, for her coming to teach us from the book of Colossians. We thank you that in your word we meet Jesus and hear um, how he came, died for us, um, and enabled us to be reconciled to you. And we pray um, for ourselves as we go from here, longing to live wholeheartedly for Christ, that you would help us. Um, You would help us to be good friends and sisters to one another, to encourage one another, but also that you'd help us by your spirit to keep our eyes fixed on him. Thank you for um, these women on the sofa who've shared so openly. We pray that this will be just the start of a conversation that will keep going and spur, spur us on to keep living for you. Amen. Let's give a round of applause for our sofa sisters. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I love hearing how people spend their day, but even more so what it looks like to live for Jesus in the mundane, in the everyday. So thank you so much for being open and honest and for answering those questions for us. As we close this session, we are now going to sing. Um, we are going to sing, and let's sing our hearts out joyfully, Christ is mine forevermore.
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are ours forevermore. And we thank you for the reminder of exactly who you are. You have created everything. You are in everything. You are the beginning and the end. And that is what we have. So we thank you for who you are and what that means to us. Amen. Well, that brings us to the end of MWC 2021. And I have to be honest, it was a bit touch and go. <laughs> I don't know what your life has been like for the last 18 months, but um, it certainly has been touch and go to know if that today would happen. So we want to say thank you so much um, to so many people who have made today possible. And uh, we thank you for Helen, who has worked so hard with her talks to share Jesus with us. We thank you for the band who've given up a day to come and serve us. We thank you for the Cornerstone staff and stewards and committee members who have worked so hard today to keep us safe, to keep things moving, and to give us tea and coffee and donuts. I can't say that's the best thing. Jesus and God's word's the best thing. Donuts is the second best thing. <laughs> Um, and also, we just thank you for, I'm going to call them Sofa Sisters, I know that's really cheesy, but we just thank you for the ladies who have shared their lives with us again today. And finally, thank you for you who have made this possible. Thank you if you've come to Nottingham, you've turned up, you got here, um, and we've sat beside each other. You mightn't have done that for a long time, sat beside a stranger. But we just thank you that you have come and joined us today. We thank you for you at home or in church that you have gathered together. We have seen some beautiful photographs on our social media of churches gathering and worshipping with us online. So we just thank you for joining us. I just want to say... Um, we would love your feedback. So on social media platforms after this and also being sent out on MailChimp will be a feedback form. So if you have time or would like to give us any feedback, we would really appreciate that. That would be really helpful. Um, I'm just going to read some verses as we close and then you are free to go. Let's, let's close our eyes in prayer. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord... Continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Father God, we just thank you that today was possible. We thank you that we can be encouraged, equipped, and refreshed in your word. I pray that you would help us as we go from here into our lives, that, what it would, that you would help us to live wholeheartedly for you, that you would help us to remember what your word has said, and that we would apply it in our lives and father we thank you that you don't just leave us that you give us the holy spirit to walk alongside us that you give us the courage to do it and you give us the wisdom as well so we just thank you for that and whatever you do in word or deed do it all in the name of the lord jesus in jesus name amen we would also like to remind you that you can listen to these talks online at any time um, after the conference as well. So if you want to go back over them or um, just have a reminder throughout the year, you can find our talks um, on there as well. And when you're going out, please don't forget to grab a chocolate. And Liz is telling me something. The book stall is still open, so go and get those Christmas presents, go and get those, all those things that you need. Um, but thank you so much for joining us and have a safe journey home. See ya.